Welcome to my ninth live stream on Wing Chun News. The topic of today is different kinds of turning and how to analyze that compared to positioning, stepping, power generation, and yielding. Now we're going to be starting out by just repeating last time, or the time before the last time, the beginning of this year, we were talking about the Peng Ma and everything that was related to standing straight. The second uh, one, we were talking about the, uh, the Tin Hao Ma, where you have one foot forward, one foot back, different ways of standing according to that positioning of your body. Now we're going to be looking at the turning. And there's uh, many different ways of turning, and we're not going to say, uh, talk about right or wrong, we're going to talk about the mechanics of the body and how the mechanics of the body relate to turning. So, uh, and how the, uh, the turning is connected into stepping and with, yeah, how everything fits together. Okay. So the first thing is uh, like this. You just follow me behind me. So we just stand like we usually do like this. So we have different kinds of turning. Usually people, they refer to turning either that you turn on the heel or you turn on the midfoot or you turn on the toe. Now three different ways of turning. Now people can do it a little, little differently. What we're going to be looking at right now is actually the striker's foot game. Not because we do it like that, but just to understand how it works compared to what we do. So this, I'm not an expert on it, but I know the, the basic mechanics. So whenever I want to strike, I'm going to turn the body like this and put the weight here. Now I'm going to be turning the body in here and have an energy that goes this way. And I'll show you why. Let me Now, if he, I will show it with him. When he turns the foot, turns in the foot and he puts his shoulder in, there's going to be a line that goes from the shoulder. Because the shoulder is so much forward compared to the foot, he can put the force in the ground and he has the turning of the foot actually turns his body closer to me and he can take a lot of force. Now, if his shoulder was a little back, you'll be able to tilt him. Even if you take the head down and stand in a good position like a good fighter, look at me, yeah, still it's going to be weak. But if he puts the shoulder into it, turn the body, this is full, this is... Uh, yeah, so you have that pressure here. Okay, so for an exercise, just from the what you call the Peng Ma, it's just the Peng Ma exercise, but with the traditional rotation, we have a straight, have the other hand up. Doesn't matter where it's up, somewhere in this range, so it covers the head. Other hand, over. Now we're going to be doing this as well. I'm going to put the arm here, and he's going to do a swing on it. Boom, and look at the foot. When I push in here, his elbow is all the way to the center, all the force goes, even though the elbow is outside his base of support, he can support by that rear leg, so when I pressure into it, he has a lot of force into it. Comes with the other hand, and boom, same thing. A aligned leg and hand is aligned. So straight, boom. Now it's not enough, so I can push my yeah. way through, yeah. Straight, now straight, now I can't push through. Go on the other one, straight, now I can't push through, okay? Straight, straight, circular, circular. Change the other person, okay? All right, so I'm going to be doing this. As we're going to look at a drill, put on a drill. I'm going to put the reasons why we do it, not this on it. And then while they're practicing, you can ask me any kind of questions as long as it's related to the topic. So please, uh, please ask. Remember this little thing I'm going to say here. You don't lean into it like this. You just turn into it. When you have turned yourself into it, it pushes into it, just push into it, just put a lot of force into it. It doesn't matter, but if my shoulder is a little back and he starts pushing, the weight is being pushed in that direction, I don't have any stability there. It's outside my stability lines. Okay, okay, so we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. We're just gonna, do, instead of you staying in the Peng Ma, you're going to be standing in the in the Chi Hao Ma. Now, we can do it like some will prefer to have it like this, so the heel is on this one, and the toe is here, so they're like this. Some will have preferred to have it here. Some will prefer to actually take that foot here, and just, this is a very common way to stand uh, for a boxer. Now, if I turn, of course, they might be on the rear foot, depending on the situation, right, because they can turn it as we can, but we just turn the foot out here. Now. Here, for the exercise, this, depending on the force is going in this direction, and I don't want to have a longer reach. If I want to have a longer reach, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to turn like this and lean out. When I lean out like this, I'll maximize my range of motion. 
It's just putting energy out there. I'm not losing balance. I'm just, look at this. Um, it's not actually a lean. It's a turn of rotation of the force coming in. The same with I'm um, coming with the other leg. Once you punch, you punch that in, you also turn that in and you bring the hip forward and you turn the body and you straighten it out to align those two points. So if you push at the end of it, push as much as you like. Yeah. And try the other one, even here. And lean into it and push uh, as much as you like. So structure-wise, there's nothing wrong with the structure. Okay, circle are the same thing. If I'm going in from the side, if, I'm, uh, if I turn it in like that, I have the, uh, my stability lines aligned with the uh, line of force. So even though it's outside my base of por uh, force, it's also outside his base of force, so if he, uh, a ba uh, sorry, base of support. So if he pushes into it, just push into it, it's going to still be stable, even though he's staying in, in the pain mark. You step uh, take it with the other leg, and turn it in here, boom. Just stand one foot forward, one foot back, and you push into it. And you cannot push it into You can actually push it through. Right? So give that one, two, left and right, go. Okay, so uh, just continue, you guys, just continue. Yeah. Okay, so there's, uh, there's no doubt that the foot can be used to generate force and it can be used as a, a, um, a point to take the recoil when you, when you punch. It can be stable, no doubt. So it's not about force, it's about stability. Stability and mobility. Any kind of stand, of course it should be able to deliver force, it should be able to yield, but the stability and the mobility is the first. So we I'm going to show you a little thing here. Stop. Now, <coughs> he's going to be standing, uh, just stand here. Now, yeah. yeah. And stand like a, in a boxing stand like that, a quarter of that. So what's going to be happening right now is I'm gonna, he's going to have both heels down. And I'm going to grab onto the arm. And I'm just going to stand like him, so we are equal. The way we stand, it doesn't matter. You can stand in whatever you prefer. If you have a different way of standing, just to match the other guy. And because both heels are down, you can push, pull in any direction, and he can still stabilize. See, if he has good stability, he will still be able to stabilize. Even if he stiffens up a little bit in the arm, I won't be able to just take him out. I will, but not, of course you can do this, but that is different. I'm not saying that you can't break it. I'm just saying that it's stable. Of course, of course you can manipulate with it. Okay, let me do one thing. He lifts up on the front foot. You stabilize, and I do this, stable. Just stay stable. Stay stable. Okay, so the stability is off. Because if you lift up the heel, you depend on the midfoot stability. And it's so weak, the ligament, there's only like two ligaments on, on one of the sides of the foot connecting uh, to the lower part of the foot. It's so unstable. Look at this. If I push a little bit here, it breaks, see? Come, come to the uh, lift it up. If I push a little bit here, look, just the two finger, look, it breaks. But if he has this foot down, I can't do anything with any hands. It's still stable. The moment that the uh, foot is up, he can't hold anything. It's actually similar to this. Can you put both your hands on the head? Look at this. If he keeps his knees, then lean a little into them. Yep. Now, yeah, so he still got his knees off. Now, he has four posts right now. If I do this, look, it's really stable. Okay? Really stable. But if he goes up on those, like that. Now if I do now this, now just keep it up there, just keep it up there. He cannot stabilize from it. It's because it's the same as the foot. Once you go up here, it can be, it can be used also to generate force. But it's not a good stabilizer. So you would never put your foot, either this one or this one, in this position. If the other person would ever start pulling in you or pushing in you, only if you're not allowed to pull and push, then it's okay to turn around on your feet and move like that. And also, a little thing, once I turn on the front foot, I actually even uh, think that I'm lengthening my punch. Look at this, uh, he lengthens lengthen his punch, he's punching out, he's lengthening that punch. He's actually giving, you see, of his movement sphere, arms moving in front of him, that arm is way back there, way back there. He's moving, as you stand like that, right now he has this movement sphere. 
the, this hand, all this motion here has no damn purpose compared to me. And he just gave me his back. So it's really like a terrible idea if you can attack him on the back. If you in any way, when he punches, you can get to his back, it's a bad idea to have, have it like that. Okay? But if you can't, it's different. In, in, in boxing, a lot of times, you, you are allowed to do that. Another thing is that we're going to get back to it. We're not going to look at the attacks because there's many reasons why we wouldn't punch like that. Uh, so it's not saying that it's wrong. We, we just don't choose it because it's not, um, according to biomechanics, it's not ideal on a close distance where we would prefer to be. Uh, the turn. So we have a turn, different turns. We're going to be doing a different kind of turning. Look at this. Instead of turning like this, on the front foot, generating force like this and like this, we're going to be turning on the heel right now. Now we're going to look at different kinds of turns. That's also the front foot turns. You can even do midfoot turns, depending on the situ situation. But right now we're just going to focus on the heel, and we're just going to move one foot at a time. So all my weight is on. Now I stay stable with one foot, and I just oh, actually I do, don't move my knees. My knees is a hinge. It's not supposed to be twisted. Whenever I open, I turn my foot as a lever out in the direction I want it, and I do it with the muscles in the center of my body. So I'm opening up in the hip. I'm closing in in the hip. It's the hip control that controls this foot. But I'm focusing, so the foot is measuring where I'm gonna go out, and the foot is measuring. The center of me is just staying here. Can I move like this and move away? Yeah, if I wanna heal for some reason. But, but are we going to get back to that right now? I just want you not to yield, just to turn. Okay? And the way we're going to be doing it as an exercise is like this. Power is going to come into you. He's putting pressure into me. I have my foot forward. He's pushing in. And when he pushes, I turn. Now, once I turn, look what happens. Once I turn, I have my rear foot is supporting the pressure of the hand. But I did not turn that foot. Because the stability lines of the other foot should control that this is one hand, this is the next one. So I need to have force by these stability lines still in two words. If I was turning like this, look, my stability lines of the leg would not support my stand. Would I be able to train myself to be stable anyway? Yes, but is it ideal biomechanically? Well, no. Not for that purpose. For different purposes, we're going to get back to that. But at this moment that he's pushing, this is angling off, having pressure in that direction. This is having pressure in this direction. That means that anything, even if he moves in from this side, then you push here, stable. Go around, stable, stable. Push, 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 push. It's stable all the way through. Okay? So just for an exercise, he pushes, you turn, push, turn. Push, turn. And start a little slower. Slow, slow, and then you got to go faster. I can do it explosively. Boom, in the turn. Boom. Doesn't matter, he boom. You can choose that you want to go to that side, you choose to go to that side, or you choose to go to that side, or get it back to you. All right, tie it There you go, guys. We are live from Copenhagen, Denmark. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Now, at the same time, while they're doing this exercise, now this is when you turn like this, the body is being pushed, the body turns. This part of my body is relaxed. It just lets go of the force. This one goes forward. Whenever pressure is coming in here, we have we rotate. Like when you, when you rotate a door, right? You just turn, okay? It's a turn. It's not a sliding door. A sliding door will do this. Okay? It's the rotation in the center. Like in a saloon. Okay, so the exercise, you just turn the exercise into this. He puts his head, uh, hand on the, on the chest, you put your hand on his chest. He pushes in, you push it. He, he pushes in, you push it. He pushes in, you push it. But just you also turn. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. So he pushes in, I push it. So just get the feeling that, that you're actually using, whenever he's pushing here, that force is coming out on the other side. Now he can do the same. Okay, go back to the other one and we push. And we go back and we push. 
So just get that feeling, right? Try it out. Push with it. In that, in that way, when you train and you push on the other body and the other one pushes back, he focuses on returning the force, returning the force. It makes no sense to do that kind of training before you can get rid of the force. First, learn to get rid of it. Be really good at that. After a while, when you train it a lot and you feel really com uh, comfortable with any pressure coming in, you can get rid of it. You start focusing on uh, returning force. Okay, stop. So this is just a, a one kind of a turn. It's a feeling of it. You can also have it like this for Wing Chun people. It doesn't matter. You put your stand, put your feet the way you like it. Uh, but you stand like this, and you have the hands on, on the front of each other, so it's like this, and you have the elbow in. Now, when he pushes with one hand, you keep the elbow in front of you, so it turns your body. But his, my arm is now so close to him, actually, because his elbow is not in front of his hip, he won't be able to push it back. Okay, so, but if he pushes it back, I'm pushing out. You see, now he has the elbow in front of his hip. So when he pushes now, he has something to deliver. Right? So when a force comes in on one side, you push on the other. You, you push on the other. Don't let it go up, because then no. it can't go there. So let it stay down. Mm -hmm. That's it, let it stay down. So if, you, if it goes up, go a little bit up. When you open the force, yeah, it comes up and into your head. Right? So you just keep it down. Keep it down. It's a little pressure exercise. Try it out. There's a lot of these little drills that you can do that will learn your body to yield or to generate force from force and to, to stabilize. And from that base, you will learn to move. So it's natural whenever pressure comes in that you adapt according to the pressure. Or if pressure disappears, that you follow. It's not a decision. It's just natural that you will go with that force. Okay, and now. But remember, all questions are welcome, as long as it's related to the topic. Okay, so now we're going to do a different kind of turn. Um, we're going to do a toe turn. We're going to get back to this kind of turning again, but we're just going to do a toe turn. Now, for many reasons, we can do a toe turn. Now I'm going to show it first like this. I want to remove my body over one foot as a support. The reason for it can be many. Let me give you a couple of reasons. I, can, I might have the want to move my foot to this foot to kick him. Or I have moved the foot out, and I'm moving to this foot to kick him if he was standing there. I might want to move the foot over here because I want to get around something. I might want to move the foot here because I want to move backwards. I might want to get the foot moved here because when he's coming, that he's giving me pressure, and I'm pulling him. Or I'm doing something else to his arm. So. I might go to one leg for certain reasons. It's just not the base of, of uh, where we go, we, we stand. We always stand mid, mid on. So we don't have to yield in that way. Are we going to have a little bit of an exercise like here? You have to remember this. If he's just punching in, the, in my head, even if he's boxing in my head, if I'm just taking the hand up like this, I am already covered. Now I could hit him at the same time, so you're hitting him at the same time, you're hitting him. So you, you can actually almost always just hit him at the same time. And you have a lot of things you can do. You can also change and get to the other hand. There's many different changes that you can do within that system. But right now we want to look at why to use the feet. Now for this reason, I'm going to have, ask him to go to my middle with a little bit of force and, I'm gonna, and with a low elbow. So he's coming in here. Now instead of, I can do this if it's very low, I can sink it. But if I, if I really wanted to turn and use the force of the body, I turn the body and I put my arm, I shoot my arm just like a punch over there. It will occupy, occupy the space of the other hand. So when he punches, I'm occupying the space. Now I'm back on the heel drive. Okay? See that? I'll occupy the space. This is the way I will hit. This is the way to use force. If I wanted to yield from force, it's different. I want to move. I want to move away. Else is not yielding. This is not yielding. This is the kind of yielding, but not with the body. So this is redirecting. But if my body goes, look, the pressure comes in, the body goes, what am I going to go with it? Okay, so for the, the turn here, also another thing is, if I turn here, I want to keep my toe on the, on the ground. I do a toe turn, and I move it into the other leg. I'm going to put it in this tripod. 
for that simple reason. Whatever my heel is stuck on my foot, I, I actually have a, a extra stability point for the foot and I've moved it the furthest away so all the weight is on this leg it can choose to come from here. Whenever I move it here, I can use it for different, I can go to that area by a turning going round. You can pull it in and take it up here. If you have to kick something, when you go up here, you will automatically lift it up and the lift up in that situation is in front of you compared to the opponent, right? If you look at this. If we're here, and I turn to this position, if I lift up here, it's frontal to my, to my opponent. If I was lifting up here, look, if I was lifting up here, kicking here on the way, I would not hit him. The, and I want, my body will not be behind it. The force is not behind him. My power line is not behind it. So, but if I get to here, my power line is behind it. Okay? So, learning just to shift over, weight is 100% under over one foot, and you just put the foot in. Bring it out, turn it over, bring it back. Try it out a couple of times. Any questions? No. no? Somebody asked, what if somebody is as good as you are? <laughs> okay. That, uh, if that's just wonderful. Yeah, that's that would really be beautiful. That's fantastic. Yeah. There is actually a lot of people who are great, great, great martial artists, and I want to meet all of them. I hope that you are one of them, maybe one of you guys out there, and please come and visit me. I would be thankful for having people coming over so we can share knowledge and experience and feel different kinds of uh, power and ways to uh, use mechanical advantages. It would be fun. There you go, guys. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be looking at it as a movement of moving away, just a, just a moving away. So we're going to be doing this. I'm going to go to this point because, look at this, if he was pushing, I'm going to show this, you stand here? Yeah. If, yeah, just stand like this. Okay. Yeah. If I push into him, and I keep on pushing, and he's just taking one leg back, he's going to keep on falling backwards. See that? So if I'm just pushing, and he's just going there, he's going to keep on falling backwards. So what I want him to do is, I want him to take that foot towards, like before, when he takes it towards that leg, and then I want him to bring it behind the other foot in here. It will bring him in a 45. Also remember, when I stand like this, if, he, if, he's, if I'm moving like this, look, if I take this foot and bring it here, and my body is in a 45 degree angle. Now when my body goes back from this position, straight back in the 45 degree angle, my feet just follow. Remember, you always just move the core, right? The feet are just moving, under, it's just movement underneath and stability. Head is the balance. So. Whenever he's coming in with a lot of pressure, like I'm mean, using, like you feel like you're losing balance here, you just guide it in, look at the leg. You just guide it in, in that direction. So you get to this point. So you are in this area, see that? So he's giving you pressure, wow, you're moving out there, boom, 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 right? He's giving you pressure, you're feeling, oh, I'm moved out there. But actually I'm behind him. Even though he pushed his way through, I step over here and I'm behind him. Now remember, there's other ways, but this is the reactive one. I can also do this, where I do it actively. But we're not gonna do that right now. We're just gonna do it passively. Whenever he pushes, I follow along, I'm in an area where I can hit him. Right? Follow along, I'm in an area where I can hit him. If you can't punch with, with the other hand, I'm still there. Remember, when you go out here, and you're here, I'm still there. The hand is not such a big threat. Okay, try it out. Jack Liu, his Sifu is uh, Wang Kam Leong, Wang Shong Leong student. And I can assure you, it is very much Wing Chun. No matter how you want to see it or not. Yeah. Um, people can, and most of you that watch it, they can easily get caught up in some specific technical uh, things that is related to their Sifu's interpretation is the way that Sifu, that Wing Chun is. And uh, I can understand from a perspective that even when I was young that I would kind of have the same idea. But once you have seen many different kinds of styles and many different kinds of ways of movement, you will understand that it's all about movement. It's about the biomechanics of controlling an area and understanding anything related to pressure and understanding all the me and mechanical advantages you can take and how you always can have an advantage. So, um, it's just different. So you might have learned something different, or people might have learned something different than from what we do. And I'm not saying that it's wrong or right. I'm just saying that this is definitely Wing Chun, if you like it or not. <laughs>
means you should maybe open the eyes a little bit. Okay, so yeah, if he pushes, it's a good example here. If he pushes into me, now, where's my hands? Look on this side. He's pushing into me. I can control his arm. I can go for the arm. It could also be that I was on the other side. I might be breaking the arm like this. It could also be that I, when he's going here, that I'm going under and I'm pulling him here. You have different options on that side. It's just whenever force is coming in here, it depends on what you want to do. You want to enter, you want to attack, you want, what, what is your main uh, strategy? Now, we, this was the, uh, what is it called, the, the movement and the turn related to a, a passive, where I'm reactive. Now I'm going to be proactive. Whenever I feel that pressure, I'm going to step out here. Look, I'm going to step out here on an ankle. And I'm going to take the arm right now, and I'm going to put it in like a punch, just like punching in. Now when I punch it in here, it's going to be covering that second hand. Now from here, I can hit him in the head. If his hand is there, you punch in here, but if his hand is there, I'm going to take it. If his hand is not there, I'm going to hit him in the head. If his hand is there, I'm going to take it. If you can punch with the other hand, you punch oh, the other hand. <laughs> Doesn't matter that much, but yeah. So you can go here and punch with that first hand. You go here, punch with the other hand. If you punch with two hands, he punches with two hands. Doesn't really matter. Once he punches in, look, you in here. Punches. Not so difficult. Okay? Try it out, left and right. Yeah. Garrick is always situationally based. But we mostly we mostly rotate on the heels. Just to answer your question. Yes, uh, most Wing Chun seems to train rotating on the heel only and not the toes. Why is that? Okay. Is that correct or should it be more situationally based? Okay, that's a good question. Look, actually let me let me show them a little bit. Here at the end, it's the end of the show. I'm gonna show you some stuff. We can continue a little bit on it next time because it's so broad, but look at this. If my body is pressured and I want to regain structure, I will have the heel end turning like this. Look at this. I will have the heel end turning like this. If I want to move away, I'm gonna move on the toe. So I can move away. So it's all situational. It's always situational. Sometimes if I'm going to turn in this direction, I'm not going to be turning on my toes. It's going to be my heels that allows my body to go in this direction. right? If I'm, if I'm turning, this is a half a turn. I might turn with both feet. Look, if he's standing in front of me, look at this. If he's standing in front of me, look at the feet now. If he's going to that side, what? I turn both feet. So I'm totally fundal. So if he attacks me in any way that he's here, right? So it, it depends. The turning depends. What do you want to do, right? If I'm, if he's coming in and punching, and I'm stepping out now, I'm, then when I turn that, just do it slowly. Look. Once when I move out, even if I move the foot here, this is going to be a tall turn. Look, this is going to be a tall turn for the kick to the knee. So everything is related. The only thing is that, and this is the drill, the finishing drill you can do. We're going to finish uh, we're on the show. If I put pressure on his body, into his body, and he's not leaning into him too much, right, a little bit, just so he can catch it if I do like this. Just so he can catch it if I do like this. Now, if I push into him and he turns on the heel, he can just turn the heel. He can turn one heel, or he can even turn two heels. But if he turns on the toe, it's not going to happen. Because weight is being put, he can turn, not turn on the midfoot, he cannot turn on the toe. Only if the pressure is not right. If the pressure is in the stand, now all this pressure will return to the heels. And because of that, if you want to turn this force, getting the leg behind it, he's got to turn on the heel. If you turn on the toe, his body will go. That's it. Just so you know. If you're on your toes, you know, your stability goes. And it shows. But now you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, uh, if you don't have any final questions, um, thank you for watching and uh, if you want further information or further instruction or demos please go to my uh, Facebook page called Sifo Martin and else I just want to say train with passion over and out